take you on a quick walk around look at this and even before i've put any buildings on you get a sense of of the dimensions of the battlefield there we are we've got the uh got the shopping mall here look at that that ah, it's got shops under how nice is that so yeah take a quick walk around so this is before the buildings go on look at that. So you can actually hide drop ships under there those um bridges so many of the drop ships in drop zone commando will actually fit neatly under the bridges as well which is pretty cool Let's see if we can get a shot under the bridge there look at that And every part of it I can use in battle. There we go, that's my 360 of my pretty amazing, I'm pretty proud, pretty amazing uncertain scenery modular terrain. What I've uh, been doing is collecting uh, buildings in MDF for, because I've got the, um, and I love the card stock, and we, we might still put some card buildings on here because I do like them and stuff, but um, because I've got the the cool terrain now I wanted to develop a board set of MDF so primarily I've gone to Dark Ops who do how would I put it they <laughs> they do terrain on a different scale um it's 10 mil scale but it's just I don't know there's more ambition about it really we're not talking about boxes and and square buildings what we're talking about is kind of avant-garde cool I mean look at the shape of that that's a hex building um we've got I think that's Tankaki Towers there. This kind of cool idiosyncratic uh, shape. Um, and the, how would I put it? The the pièce de la résistance. Is that what you say? I don't know. Well, that's a pièce de résistance. Yeah, well, that's what we was one of the armies tonight, I think. But here we've got, uh, we've got Oasis Palms. So that's one that we've we've got already, which Dark Ops have kindly given us. And that one I've, I've bought because I loved it. Uh, so I bought one. So you see, I'm, I'm I'm in the middle of constructing that one, but I still think it looks amazing and ready to play this evening. Um, and they're just amazing. So you get in in the pack, you get like two of those: that one and the other white one over there. There you go. And you get the kind of hotel foyer in the middle. So you put those together. They're modular. You put them together, or, or have them separate, like we've got. And we're going to have those as kind of cool, big, objective type buildings. So there we go. So that's the. Uh, that's the terrain that we're developing at the moment. So, Commanders, what we see here, can you see the dots in the distance? Let me have a look. Um, can you see those? There we are. See those counters? Now, on the bottom of those counters might or might not be um, essentially white paint. Is that, that, That's right, isn't it? That's how it works? Yeah, there's white paint on five of them. Five of these. And how many of them are there in all? 32. 32. So, essentially, we've got to put models on as many of them as we can and if you uncover one and have possession of it you get a victory point uh, and yes. if yeah is that right and if, the white ones, yeah. that's it and then if you get one of the white ones and get it off the table off the side of the cityscape you end up with two so that's what's going to happen we're going to be coming on from the corners from readiness so we're going to be coming on there's nothing going to be pre-deployed um and we're going to be coming on from the corners uh, as i say that is over there, and is it a foot on each side? It's a foot, yes, yeah, basically one of the boards. <laughs> one of the boards, there we go. There we go, from there to there to there. So it's, it's very interesting, I like corner deployment because it provides different little challenges for you. Where are you gonna go? How are you gonna move off in your first turn? I'm going to probably go on to my army list first. It's the first time I've played the Shaltari. This is a new army for me. Apologies for my less than um, Stella and artisan paint job. I've gone for a bright yellow so that even I can see the models on the table. So I'm going to start with my gate uh, group. The, the Shaltari have got funny tricks. They don't have armoured personnel carriers and dropships assigned to, to each unit. No, they have gates that wobble about. Wobble, that's a military term, isn't it? Wobble. It's, it's a big wobble. It's a big term. Big, big term. Uh, so what I've got is the gates which attach themselves essentially to... Uh, battle groups at the beginning of each turn or when the battle groups are activating in fact so you just get a, a cadre you do, you get a pool it's like a carpool I guess it's a drop drop ship pool or, or something um, so you just you, you just get a number of uh, uh, gates and you uh, assign them to a different battle group 
when when they get activated. So what have I got for my 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 pool? I've got four medium gates. There we go. They can they can they can put three little tanks or one very big walker in each of them, and then they can drop one off each turn as well. I've got two spirit gates. Those are a light light gate so they can transport things like infantry that's what they're for and then haven terror gates they're the kind of armor personnel carry but again they're a gate and again they only transport light uh, things like infantry they can't put vehicles inside so let's go on to my commander uh, it is a garial there we go uh, it's got some heavy weapons on it it's got a flamer weapon on it as well which can be quite good and it's a level four shaltari commander so i've not used the cards before so I don't know what they're like. Um, some of you out there might be shuddering at my immense power or might be going, oh God, they're not that good. So I'll see. I'll see in the game how good they are. Let's go on to my sword point, which is essentially the standard units for the Shaltari army. Three Tomahawk Grav tanks, uh, strength 10 guns. Uh, they they skim, so they've got a bit of defense there and, and uh, we'll come on to the defenses of the Shaltari later. Then... Three cookery anti-air tanks. And some people say these are really good. Some people say they're not worth the points. We will we will test, I'm sure. So then we come on to I what's this called? Is it the war fist? Again, apologies to the commanders out there as I as I check. It is a war fist. It's double Jaguars. Now these Jaguars are in different um squads so that they can use the use the gates more effectively. So they're in two different squads, so they can act independently if they want different... Uh, so, But it's same activation, though, because they're the same battle group. Then we move on to infantry. The first warrior host has got Braves, which are kind of power-armoured, uh, hulking masses. They only get three. That's how mighty and powerful they are. They're, they're OK. They're, they're pretty good in close combat. They're pretty good at shooting. Then we have Pungari, which are essentially a a race that the Shaltari have co-opted into their service. They're not very brave, but they're very brave if they've got Shaltari natives next to them. So they're very hard to break if they've got guys looking over them in combat. They're very good at finding things as well, the Pungari, and they are, although not very good in close combat, there are lots of them. So they're very hard to kill in their own way, merely because there are a lot of points of damage on them. Then we move to... Um, the second, uh, I think this is the second brave unit, the second unit of, of warriors. So another set of braves in their power armor, and they've got a dream snare in support. And the dream snare, again, I'll come on to in a little while. And then finally, we've got the specialist group. I can't remember what these are called. I think they might be called the sword tip. I don't know. Let's have a look. Again, apologies for my, um, my naivety. In, in working out what I've got. It is indeed as a spear tip, not a sword tip. I was close, Commander, and I beg your forgiveness there. And that is a, a three Yaris, which are scouts, essentially, and a Firstborn, which are my super elite infantry. And they are meant to be quite good. I've not used them before, but but people do shudder when they see when they see them. I mean, this scenario probably isn't going to have a lot of close combat in it. That's not really what this scenario is about. But if we do get the opportunity, maybe I can run these uh, elite bits of infantry out so great oh and uh, so before we go the um uh, shaltari benefit they're not very tough but they benefit from having a passive save so once you've damaged them uh, so once you've hit them you roll a save and usually that's a five plus so you've got a one in three chance of all the hits kind of rolling off you so i guess that's quite good and then if the dream snare there we go is within six inches of you your passive save goes uh, one better so you you might save on a four plus generally for most of your troops so there we go that's my 1500 points shaltari force on to the resistance so um uh, uncertain craig has started with uh, essentially he's got his little tricks as well he's got something that he can apply to different battle groups too he's got the gaping maw the the cosseting opening of a breaching drill breaching a drill. breaching drill then we go on to his commander which looks to me like a jackson heavy tank is that no, right it's oh, is it alexander M3. oh m3 alexander oh it's even bigger than a jackson yeah. uh, it's an m3 alexander with big um, guns and, and a dropship with aa right good good uh, and then we have uh, a unit of 
um, free riders. Ooh, free attached, riders, frightening. But they will start off the board because they, they are underground. The drill. That's right. For the drill. Very good. Okay, um, good. We then have the vehicle detachment of uh, three gun trucks in a. I can't remember the name of the hovercraft now. Kraken. There you go. Kraken. Kraken. That's the one. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, six storm wagons. Oh, very, very dev- a devastating. And uh, I, I, I would put forward that, that Uncertain Craig uses them very well. Um, then we have the infantry detachment, which is essentially uh, three Jacksons there we go. with um, a dropship. Dropship. And uh, lots three of infantry. Units, three units of infantry. Are they normal infantry? They're all. But lots bog, of them. All bog standard infantry. But lots of no, them. No, no, no. And, 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 and commanders, when we're looking into the buildings to get these objectives, it requires infantry to do that. So, uh, so uh, we have also done a well second um, resistance band. Good. With a uh, battle bus with three in the back. Very good. Then we have the Rusted Fist. The Rusted Fist. I love the name of that. Um, right. Rusted Fist is two Zukos. Mm hmm. And, and we seem to have. What's stolen, going on here? What's going on here? We, we seem to have stolen What's Mage going on here? Off, it, off the PHR. So and, I've, and I've left. I've left the homeworld for one evening. And what have you done? We stole it. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, look. Um, well, they seem to have merged it with a hell hog. My, it, it's 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 terrible, commanders, they, isn't it? That's because resistance don't have the sideboard, you see, uh, so they can't fly the HR. So they need to put a cockpit on. So they need to put some. Some cables and yeah. The, yeah, some cables and a yeah. steering wheel. A steering in wheel, it. yeah, that's oh, what we've done. My goodness, you see what uh, I had, do you see what I have to put up with? Do you? And Just then, and then vandalism. We have, um, vandalism. Two um, Mechmeds. Mechmeds. Uh, with also their own dropship. Big fan of Mechmeds, me. And then we have an infiltrator unit at the end. Another three, um, three riders. Three riders. Which riders. Also start underground. Underground. Very good. And what level is your commander? At four. Four. Oh, hey, we've gone for the old. We've gone for the old commanding tonight, haven't we? Both uh, at level four. Do, it's really always, good. I always go for level four. I, I do too. I think it gives you a lot of flexibility. I'd rather have that than an extra couple of units of infantry myself. Mm, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. So great. We'll we'll set up. That's right. So fire. So good. So um, we have rolled off. I got a two, and um, uh, uncertain Craig got a six. So he has elected to go first in the first turn, and he's sadly failed to get his drill on in the first turn. So, in, so activation one for uh, Uncertain Craig, he puts his battle bus on in his um, deployment corner. And in my first activation, I have moved a spirit gate on there and I've put Braves in and turned over. And look, I got a white one immediately. There you go. So uh, that's one victory point so far. So um, maybe... Um, Uncertain Craig is going to bomb me the hell out of that building. Let's have let's have a look and hope hope that doesn't happen. And Ooh. then I've put a spirit gate which I've activated with that battle group there. You actually went first, didn't you? So yeah, I went first and dropped off the vehicle detachment which just squirted onto the board. Excellent. What vehicle so, detachment is that? That's, uh, that's the um, storm wagons. Storm wagons. Ah, the gun trucks. Oh, very good. Very good. Yes. So um, I have activated my. Um, second warrior group and i've put a haven gate on there i've deployed the braves through that into the really large building here and uh, uncovered one of the possible uh, intel pieces and there's nothing there so activation three what did you do uncertain craig uh, i bought on uh, a, drop, a lift hawk a lift hawk drop some troops off drop some troops off and i have to have an objective an objective ah so um very good, very good. So we're one each. That's really good. Uh, and I bought on my commander. There we go. So my Gariel uh, unloaded from that Eden gate there, um, coming on from this corner, and um, got got a got a uh, an intel piece. But there was nothing in it. There was nothing in it. So uh, unlucky me. But that's that's okay. We're equals now, aren't we? Yes. But I, that's, I love this random play thing. It's really good. Okay, on to uh, activation four. And what did you do in activation four, sir? Say, Ooh. Um, there, like wow, that went a long way. That came that came from where? Over over yeah, that that side, there. and it went all the way over there. Dropped. And we got took a test, and he he got a one. Actually, we were a bit worried for a second, yeah. weren't we? And then uh, it was fine though. We have a duff token. We've got a duff because it landed on the token. So it's just the way we play it. We think it's in the rules that if you land on something, 
you can check for it and that's absolutely fine so uh, and, and hey we're taking a test for it as well i think so i think that's perfectly fair yeah usually you usually don't take a test for land it's just going to ground yes we, we do anyway. we do we think it's fun to be honest especially if you're getting an if you get an objective for it that's okay isn't it so i um uh, deployed tanks i deployed my normal tanks in this activation so there we go i've just deployed those um uh, tomahawks there um, they're not just a little bit short of that intel piece, so I can't quite work out what's in there yet. And then these ones, the cookery, uh, landed on that there objective on the uh, intel piece, and uh, there's nothing in it. So there we go. So we're, we're doing pretty well on finding them at equal measure, at equal pace, I think. So we're doing well at that. Great. So on to activation five. What did you do? I bought on the HQ. Foul resistance commander. Bought on the HQ? Where's the HQ? Um, he's, he's, on, he's underneath. Ah. Oh. I haven't magnetized him. Oh, I see. Um, on the specialist. No, no, normal one. Normal one, okay. Uh, uh, I, I, I could deploy him, but I thought, uh, for a role-playing aspect, dropping a super heavy tank off a wall is not something <laughs> that you usually do. He is a gentleman gamer, it must be said, Commander. So uh, uh, fair play there, and I must, I must reward that somehow uh, yeah. as the game goes on. And then in my activation, I activated my spear tip uh, special operations uh, elite unit, but uh, I didn't do much, I just used it to activate a gate and put the 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 terror gate there towards the building on my back line slight retcon as we uh remember that there's more to Ooh. the battle group there is that a white one it's a white one oh streaks ahead streaks ahead one. so um sorry what was that that was jackson's from your no, mailed you see, fist you're was the it? one of the rusted fist one that ah I rusted fist yes of course i mean not played in a while um, but a little rusty, little, just like the rusty fish. Indeed, so we've, we've, we've let him complete his battle group. Brilliant. Okay, so that's activation six, the resistance going first this first turn. Abnormally, but uh, tactically adeptly, it would seem. What did you activate this right, time? I couldn't activate anything this turn. Oh, okay. Because, obviously, uh, my last activation would have been my infiltrators unit. Uh-huh. But as they're underground... They can't activate. This hasn't been deployed. Okay. I cannot activate The driller. It. Right, good. So that essentially a burned activation. And then I, yeah. for my final activation... Yeah. Activated my um, specialists. Um, sorry, not my specialists. Um, oh, yes, my specialists. Sorry. Um, it, oh, sorry, I activated something else last term. It wasn't. It was a Braves squad. I'll, I'll, I'll correct that in, in the filming. Um, so, yes, I activated my specialists and uh, disgorged uh, Firstborn into this building here and uncovered a white one. So we've now both got two, two white we've got ones. two white ones each we've got two pieces of objective so this is tense because essentially we've both got them on our back lines so there's a good chance we're both going to get them off this turn not for definite but it's a good chance so that means there's another one out there the game one, winner is out there really, somewhere <laughs> can you see them all can you they could be <laughs> anywhere so who is going to get and I didn't, I didn't going look to, where I placed indeed, them. I indeed. Place. who's going to distribute their forces most efficiently commanders in order to um in order to search for the final piece of the puzzle so yes yeah, so at the end of turn one i have ended up with three uh nothings how many of you ended up with just uh, one nothing so just far. one nothing so far and two two hits and i've got two hits and three nothings brilliant the beginning turn two uh uncertain craig rolls successfully to bring it in look look at it Keeping up beautifully from the ground there. Uh, the drill, the driller. So um, I'm going to expect some horrible free riders coming out of that very soon. So very good. Did it Did it uh, go very far? It didn't actually, did it? It went four it's, inches that way. But as I can't go four inches into that building. It just stops where it, where it goes. So there we go. Very good. So we are at the beginning of the top of turn two. I uh, began. Uh, I let it go first. I won the roll off. Uh, so the Shatari went first. I activated... Uh, one of my warrior squads in order to essentially evacuate from this smaller building here. I know that uh, Uncertain Craig has got some very heavy firepower over there in his um, gun wagons. Are this what they're called? What they're called? Storm wagons. Storm wagons. They're, they're evil, and I know they can drop buildings pretty quickly and destroy infantry. So I essentially put infantry into the Haven Terror Gate uh, and took it off the board with the objective. So I'm now on. Where, where is that? I'm now on one, uh, two victory points, which is great. So I uh, got them off. Uh, the Pangari, no, which no, are in the same battle group. It's one victory point per 
Yes, one point. Yeah, it's an extra oh, one if you get it off, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So it's one of you. Yeah, yeah, good. So, um, so then in uh, in the same activation, the Pungari, uh, uh, sorry, the Spirit Gate there moved to there. There it is. Look, isn't it beautiful? And uh, unloaded some Pungari into that building there, and uh, found a. Uh, an intel piece but there was nothing in it so sadly there we go nothing in that so well done um then i played foresight which is a card i also played a card in the initiation phase in the cleanup phase so that's uh, an underground monorail which is there which is great um i played foresight in order to force uh uncertain craig to um unleash havoc with his storm wagons, because I know how bad they are and I know how well he uses them. So I wanted essentially to get him to um, shoot before I put any big tanks and things out. But unfortunately, what he did is just chose a really good target anyway. All the way over there, he uh, targeted this big building with my firstborn in and I actually managed to kill two out of six of them. So that wasn't too bad. It, it, it's still going to allow me to get the, um, the objective off, but I'm down by two. So that is quite good really really good shooting i think in the first turn uh their their extra saves not saving them sadly on this occasion hey ho uh we'll have to get them to uh learn to i don't know hide behind filing cabinets more mm. uh, effectively in future on to activation two so i'm going to deploy these deploy it, the special asians moving yeah so from the middle is it from the front it's from the stem yeah from the middle of the model so, so uh, That way. The Zukov's oh, Zukov's anti-air covers. It's 24 inches their range. Yeah, but I can't fire because I've just deployed. That's it. true, but but still a horrific and hor horrible tank. And I will get two points. Makes sense. So that goes off. So where's that gone from? It's gone from there. Yeah. To that point there. Great. And how far is that? Uh, less than 16 inches. Yeah, but it's just deployed. Oh, so eight. So eight eight inches. inches. My point. I am. Um, it's actually here then. There he is. It'll come up. it'll go off next turn anyway. So this is what this is activation number three, isn't it? Yes. Coming forward with the mech meds, I believe. Drop the mech meds behind this building. Behind the building. Frightening indeed. Very frightening indeed. So activation three, I have moved forward with my medium gates dropping a Jaguar there. I've dropped another Jaguar from the same battle group over there and it's looked <coughs> at uh, a piece of intel and found that there's nothing there. And then uh, Uncertain Cray. Look at this, look at this board. I'm so impressed by the board. Um, something I'm going to notice mid-game as well is uh, <laughs> the absolute lack of movement on the boards themselves. Look at how much they don't don't move. Uh, <laughs> which is great, isn't it? Uh, nothing falls over. Um, your ranges don't get mucked up when you move everything about. It's really good. So what did you do? You moved I, your... I moved the Rusted Fist. The Rusted Fist. You yeah, deployed your mech... Me uh, sorry, Zukovs. Cause, yeah, because they found an objective. Yep. Zukovs got dropped. Yep. And the dropship has uh, left. Yes, dropships can hold objectives. That's With absolutely objective. uh, That's correct, absolutely yes. And, uh, and also, the this one moved forward eight inches and dropped the mech meds. Dropped the mech meds. Forward. So those are Zukovs and those are mech meds. Forward. You know, halfway at the board. So that's good. This is Drop Zone Commander in action, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, commanders, uh, generals. This is, is him... Yeah, that's right. That's right. Go for it. I would like now for the special rule that supposedly room version two. Version two, where we can drop and fire. Drop and fire. Thing. Yes, indeed. And yes, that, that might that, that would be quite nice. That might be quite nice. But what 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 um, what uh, uh, certain Craig has done is he's, he's projected firepower into my half of the board, and I'm the Shaltari. I'm meant to be projecting into his half of the board, so he's doing really well. I would put forward. <laughs> Great. On to activation four. So I activated my uh, sword point, my my standard. Uh, battle group I played uh, overcharged engines what was it called it was called um, 
power to the engines, that's what it's called. So that allowed my skimmers to go five extra inches. D3 plus three rolled quite well, rolled a two. Five extra inches. So that allowed my tomahawks to scream over an objective there that was nothing. Uh, scream into intelligence there, which was nothing. But uh, Uncertain Craig, in the meantime, played a card of his own. Yes. A booby trap. Im improvised trap. Improvised the trap. IED. And uh, went straight through my passive save and blew up one of the tanks on the way. So I, I uncovered two for, for nothing, and he got a free kill on me. So hey ho, well done there, I say. Very, very So I moved my HQ. HQ. You dropped onto a duff, a duff uh, objective that was there. Very good. And the dropship has moved off. Moved off. But he might, he might come back and pick him up. He might do. He might do. Very good. So on to activation five. Very good. So, Shaltari activation five. The Garial moves up a little bit and activates a gate with it that, that storms up from the back uh, to this forward position here. And then, um, on certain Craig, do you search the building? You get into that build building over there, do that you? Building there, Big building has, over there. Nothing in it. Nothing in it. So, nothing there we go. There. And then you burn your last activation. That's my. Then it's yours, then. Yeah, yours. Why, why is it? Oh, because you can't. I can't come out the drill. Ah, oh, one thing can come out of the drill. Because the drill's very powerful, only one thing can come out of it a turn. Very fair. So, uh, finally, I uh, activate my spear point special forces. The firstborns in that building there take the objective that they found from the board edge, and they, they get off. And uh, <coughs> the Eden gate there that was there has moved over the bridge. And it's gone to the deck. I've rolled. Again, it's just, when you land, I think strictly you don't have to land. We like to roll for it, don't we? We like the danger, so we roll for it. And I got a one and then a five. So I was lucky and uh, landed on, on a possible objective and found nothing. So we're on to, um, we're on to turn, two, turn, turn three. Excellent. So at the end of turn two, um, I've got uh, four victory points. Uh, that's two objectives off the uh, city edge into the suburbs and I've got that many uh, how many I'll count that later that's uh, two four six eight nine nine duds how many how many have you got six on certain grade six duds two on the way off and two on the way off there's not much I can do about it so to be honest they are probably his very good so evil trickery is afoot at the beginning of turn three turn three yeah, turn, uh, turn three it all moulds into one in war it does commanders um uh, Uncertain Craig wins the roll off, but I play a devilish card, um, Central HQ Directive. We re roll uh, with me at CV5, and I get the advantage, and I'm going to elect to go first again. So, beginning of uh, turn three for um, Shaltari, my gate moved from there to there and picked up Jaguars, uh, picked up a Jaguar that was on the bridge there. Uh, the Jaguar that was over by this gate just went up into the uh, into the Eden gate there. And then these two gates here, one of which moved, um, spat out the two Jaguars there. So they can't shoot, but they're now hopefully near some objectives and just kind of looking to... Um, well, I had a quick pot shot. Oh, yes, that's true. Look, looking, looking to dominate a bit of ground if they can indeed. And the Zukovs over there with very long-range guns, they've got uh, their super, super advanced rail guns, did take a pot shot... Uh, on a four plus, I think it's twos, isn't it? Three fours, yeah, normally. Uh, and sa sadly rolled a one, which so uh, it could because it could alpha uh, one of those drop ships. So um, uh, that that was quite frightening for me. So good. Uh, and you, what did you do? So you redeployed some Jacksons I, over I, here, didn't I you? I basically it? spread some Jacksons out, and I, I've taken this one to get the objective off. So where where are where are they, sir? Are they there? There's one one Jackson there. Uh huh. One Jackson. Here. There we are. Very and there's good. one right on the edge of the board, ready to rock off. I read that's, that's right. right. You moved. Yes, you moved the dropship, didn't you, to to get the objective that it captured. Yeah. Off. Very good. So uh, next activation. It's activation two. So in my uh, second activation, I put some Braves into this building over here. Uh, you put them put them forward with the spirit gate and uh, uh, reveal an objective. So it's all to play for now. That is the final objective. We've got two each essentially. Yeah. So um, what's happened is that um, uh, Uncertain Craig has in reply uh, essentially put loads of fire into that building. He's, he's used his, his storm trucks to um, uh, pile fire down onto, onto that building and he's started to use his gun trucks 
to uh, kill an Eden Gate. That's very important for him. And uh, the, the Eden Gate there is, is going to lose me a lot of mobility here. So he's going to start to pile on pressure there and try and capture that building or at least stop me getting anything from it. So very, very interesting in the third turn, about halfway through the game. Uh, and, and it just got really interesting. As, as really, to win the game, we've got to fight over that one objective. Okay, a tense activation, commanders. This is it's on tenter hooks now. It really is now uh, on this flank, on the left flank. You'll notice actually we, we've gone from end to end rather than side to side. I don't know if I pointed that out earlier. Look, there we go. So we're going down. So the maneuver's brilliant. It's all been about maneuver, hasn't it? It has indeed. Before the shooting starts, so that's really good. So I've been able to project. So I'm quite proud of myself. Even that I'm quite a defensive player, aren't I? Normally, so I've been able to project forward, get the objective. However, that has not stopped on certain Craig essentially kicking the hell out of that building. He's done how many points of damage to it now? Uh, we took to 18. 18. So it's got two so more left. Ten points of damage. Two more left. That's uh, not very many. No, it's not. So uh, essentially, if that building is destroyed, it's a draw. So there we go. Um, uh, have you got anything else to shoot at it this turn, I wonder? What? Oh, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to die, to be honest, <laughs> isn't it? So there we go. That's, that's where we, we find that. So I um, put forward... What did I do? This... Uh, oh, that's right. I just... I. Um, dematerialized some infantry over there didn't i yeah uh, and i yeah. moved uh haven gate forward there to that building uh dematerialized some infantry there and moved the dream snare up just a little bit uh and uh, sadly it's not in range to do anything but it's uh, it's just a little bit closer so it can support uh with passive saves the other units like it's meant to and then um uh, on certain craig uh in his activation pumped the hell out of the building with his uh, the commander, commander there, hiding, there hiding under the, under the That's it. What's, tunnel. What's he in? He's in uh, M3 Alexander. M3 Alexander and, and his, the, uh, his, his dropship. I had a pot shot at it with the uh, anti-air cannon of the Jaguar, um, but uh, it, it failed to wound it. Brilliant. Next uh, activation. So, uh, turn three, we actually call it at turn, turn three. Very interesting game. Not, that, that's, not, that's not a bad thing at all. Um, I, I activate uh, for my... My last ditch attempt at saving that building, I activate my anti-air tanks there. Move the forward to the bridge, which gives them range to this dropship there, which is capable of shooting at the building. But I fail, sadly, I do um, a damage point to it, but I sadly fail to uh, bring it down. I need more firepower than that, commanders. In return, uh, Uncertain Craig unleashes hell from that dropship into the building, which you can see there now, sadly, is a wreck. Can you see that, Commanders? Yes, you can. So that, uh, I think, was a rocket launcher, is that right? Yeah, the missile launcher. Only he rolled the just what he needed to double up on it. That did two final points of damage to the building, dropping it, which gets rid and destroys the last objective marker. So we are stuck, therefore, on two... It's draw. Two objectives each. Now, many people play uh, kill points. We don't tend to. Oh. I actually the the art of drop zone commander to me is about the um, strategy, the tactics. It's about the movement. It's called drop zone commander, not kill each other in the first two turns, commander. No, that's not what it's about. It's about if there's one man that can get that briefcase off the board uh, uh, um, with the information to uh, stop the enemy plans from coming to fruition, and. Uh, 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 allow them some advantage then that's it that's what it's about isn't it so what did you think of the game uncertain craig um terrain's ace uh, I, it's the first time i've actually played on my own wall. this is true now uncertain craig is from uncertain towers he's he's from uncertain scenery he made these boards and it's the uh, first time he's actually played drop zone commander on them since he designed it, does give you, um, like I say, the, 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 if we're playing another game, dropping the um, drill here under the bridge gives you that, uh, that uh, advantage. Indeed. What do I normally do to your drill when you, you drop it? You blow my drill up. That's exactly what I do, don't I? My you entire army up. descends, but he had a bridge to drop it under, so it made it very... I, essentially, I just had to let him do it. Yeah. What I did, I deployed a gariel over there to try and flame his, his free riders if they came near me. That was it. That's all I could do. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, uh, but that made me deploy my Gary early. 
so that was good it worked yeah, it worked yeah. as a strategy so I, I like that so yeah it creates a really interesting um, yeah. cover as well so my, my dream snare for example was able to deploy in the shopping mall there and although it couldn't shoot much that's not really its job is it what yeah. it did was just stay behind the lines there in nice cover and just supported the two Jaguars there now the Jaguars didn't take much fire but had they have taken fire they would have been well covered by the dream snare behind them and also uh, obviously my commander Hiding in that hiding tunnel. in the cover, and you had to, you had to you also had to laser up line of sight for that building, didn't you? Did, which was good. Just to make sure we had got the, the rays that we could get over. That's it. This bit to get the building. Absolutely. Now it may look, ladies and gentlemen, like there aren't that many buildings on this board, and there are actually. If I, mean, if I think I look from this line of sight, you can see look, the lines of sight are very well covered um, by the buildings, but. The um, depreci depreciation, the depression, sorry, yeah. in the terrain actually creates cover all on their own. So actually, there's a load of cover on this board. Um, also, I noticed these um, low grav tanks got some really nice cover from the wall there. Can you see that? Can you see how? I think you can. I think you can. Dear Commander, see how the wall there covered those tanks as they looked if, over if at the you, mech meds. You can get your camera in between the buildings here and down to that level. Let's see if we can do that, Commanders. Mm, you can see how how much cover. Ooh. Slightly lower, slightly, slightly lower. Slightly lower, yeah. Slightly yeah, lower. go on, you guide me. There you go. Look how much, look how little of those tanks. Try and steady that a bit, okay. Look how little of those tanks is actually being shown at that particular level. That's, that's great, isn't it? Getting, and the, um, so it's always actually just getting level, level with the uh, height of the Mehmeds, which are on the, to the left of that camera. Left of the camera there, yeah. where are they? So they've gone. Oh, that's they're right, they've gone there, there, but that's where they were, isn't it? So I know they can't fire at them, but you know, it's, it's one, that kind of thing. That's it, absolutely. But they could have got closer and fired, certainly, and well, they, they would have heading, destroyed the grav tanks in short order. That's right. Um, yes. So, so, yeah, so great cover. So, yeah, I enjoyed that immensely. Um, I always love a draw anyway. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't. I, I'm. It's not always about the winning. It's we're about not, having we're it. Not, we're not competitive. We're not a competitive players. set of players, so it's always it's always about about the game. But um, this is one of my favourite scenarios as well, where you're you're tearing around the board trying to find objectives. So uh, overall, how many objectives did we uncover? Or so how many potential objectives did we uncover? Well, I uncovered uh, eight. Eight. One, two, oop, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So pretty equal. So we've got nine. So there's another. There's another like. Well, that's right. On the table, that's right. So, in wrap up, how how did I do? How did I do? I was a little bit slow at the start, not really realizing how the mechanic for um, gates works properly. So, I think I was just using them as dropships at the beginning, when really I should have been leapfrogging them forwards to deploy things so that I can deploy deep later. So it took me to my third turn to kind of get that. So what I did was deploy in the first, uh, the second turn, uh, Jaggy was along this line here. Then I was able to leapfrog gates over to here and really penetrate the second yeah, half you, of the board. You, you worried me. That and that's it. And, and it actually allowed me to get that last objective. So although I lost the last objective, what it proves is I can, I can penetrate forward uh, uh, really well with this type of army. So I think it's just a case of me now learning to use that army as this is my first outing. So what did you do well, do you think? I I, I didn't think I'd play very well really at all. I could have played... Uh, I didn't think I'd, I played badly. No, I, I can't think of anything you um, did that was I, a mistake. I, I, just, I just don't think... Um, the army is slow and ponderous. Yes. It's it's not built for this kind of it's true. Um, thing. Well, I don't know. I mean, I think you got your mech meds forward really well. Yeah. And they have to be forward. So uh, had I have stayed in the building, you would have just destroyed the building. I think this kind of mission, though, calls for a, a, a two... A, a two left orcs full of Jacksons. Yes. Um, yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, we will explain to the viewers at some point the what I call the Jackson hand grenade. The Jackson hand grenade. Yeah, the fact the fact well. you've got three troop carriers on a drop ship, you can you can just cover so so many buildings at once well, with two of them. Fact, it's brilliant. You drop into a section with three buildings. Yeah. You you, you move forward eight inches with the, the left hawk, then you deploy each Jackson three inches in any direction you want, and then they move six inches. So you're moving eight inches forward plus another six inches in any direction beyond that. You just, you just it's like a hand grenade, yeah. You can yeah. cover three buildings per turn. Yeah, bang. When you're searching, yeah. so two Jacksons, it's nine buildings in in a couple of turns. That's that's yeah. a lot of ground cover. That's the mistake I made first turn. 
I didn't deploy into this building first turn. Ah. So I, I could have Jackson hand grenaded this whole area, mm. but I didn't. Mm. So that's um, what we're going to call it. We're going to call it the Jackson hand grenade from now on. There we go, because they've got grenade launchers after all. So I think something else that um, uh, Uncertain Craig did do very well is, as I say, he projected his mech meds here, and I had Braves in this building here. That was as far as they were ever going to go. They were never going to go any. Oh, sorry, I, I got I got another one here. So I got I got ten. So that's okay. Not not too bad. I'm not feeling too bad about that. So so yeah. So that that is as far forward as as, as those braids were ever going to get. They had to dematerialize there. There's no way they could have gone for that building because your mechmates would have that they they are a building destruction tank. Oh, they would have killed all the braids. Yeah. Uh, and I couldn't have penetrated further because you had good anti-air cover along that line. So you stopped my attack going forward. And you'll notice that I then had to redeploy that Eden gate that I, I put I here. I actually had to add you cords and a bleak line of anti -airport. And a bleak line. Oh, advanced strategies, it ladies and gentlemen. Line, advanced strategies. The oblique line, <laughs> I say. So great. Thank you for... For joining, as I say, a really good game. Uh, three <coughs> turns is is enough. Uh, uh, when you're playing tactically like this, this was about finding things, manoeuvre, moving about. We spread out over the board, really learned about what our units did uh, yeah. and, and learned about the other things that units can do. I mean, you use big, heavy tanks to go find things um, by using I the drop do, rules whenever, correctly. Whenever we played this mission, all my tanks always go and find things. Yeah, yeah. Um, but also, they're also covering ground yeah. and also holding areas at the same time. Absolutely. So great. So in conclusion, well, it's a draw. So both of us get to say something to the universe. So what would you like to say to the universe on behalf of the resistance? Let me let me find a good resistance model for let's let's look at your commander because he survived, which is really rare. Everything survived. No, usually mm. I, I lose at least half my army against your PHR. That's true. They did say the Shaltari are not PHR, however, but yes. Um, but I, I, I actually survived. Uh, but then again, because I I, I, of this terrain... Uh, this is this is the resistance's terrain. You can I agree. hide, you can jump, you can drop bombs, IEDs. This is where it's at. Definitely, um, and I like it. Good. It suits it suits the um, this terrain with the depressions and the buildings suits resistance well. Excellent. And okay. from my point of view, from the Shaltari, all I will say is, come and be our friends because we have your best interests at heart. Thank you very much for joining us. So whatever you're doing, whatever cityscape you're in, I hope it's as nice as mine, <laughs> um, uh, keep dropping and keep commanding.